Praise the name of the Lord. I want to thank God again for this opportunity that we can come together to listen to him and to share together from his word. And I want to thank the leadership of All Saints Cathedral for the opportunity that he, they give me. It is an honor, but I'm also humbled to stand before God is people. Thank you for suffer, sacrificing your lunch hour. It would be time really to catch up. It would be time to go and enjoy. I bring you greetings from my family and also from St. James Chapel Makerere University Business School where I serve. Yesterday we had a very rare opportunity to meet the Deputy Speaker of Parliament. Since the early 2000s, I decided to take issues of homosexuality head on. Now, when people started crying, some of us have had our own share, which I don't want to go so much into. And uh, God opened a door, and we had really good time of sharing with him and putting across some of the things, how they started. But because of his level, he said it is better that let's go through the Education Committee of Parliament and then at a later time, we will again have some time to meet him. So they sent instructions to the Education Committee of Parliament and I'm hoping that later today or tomorrow, we will be programmed to meet the Education Committee of Parliament and then after we have shared with, interacted with them, shared with them what we have and looked and look at what they have come up with, then maybe we will have time to again share with the speaker or the deputy speaker. Let us pray together once again. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for giving us this afternoon and time to break forth the bread of life together, which is your word. As I stand before your people, help me out, speak to me and speak through me, and help each one of us to receive from you, so that in the end, honor, praise, and glory will come back to you. So silence every other voice and bless our time together because we came through Jesus Christ, our Lord understanding how faith works. What is faith? It is a strong belief. Faith is a trust and faith is a confidence. I know you want me to go to Hebrews chapter 11 verse 1, but I leave that for you because it's already in your Bible. But I want to share from my mind what I believe also on the other hand. Not disputing what the Bible says, but faith is about strong belief. It means you are grounded. Faith is about trust. It means you have something or somebody that you can depend on. Faith is about confidence and you know without any fear or doubt that you are having the right thing or you are on the right track. Real Bible faith is a matter of the heart. Comes from your heart. But it does not only end at the heart, it carries alongside it God-given responsibilities. And so, faith is what you believe, what I believe. And it is always a decision. By the time you decided to sit on that bench, you have made a decision and you trust and you are confident that that bench is going to carry your weight. And in the end, faith results into some kind of action. So it is not only... A matter of the heart, 
it's not a decision only, but it also ends in some kind of action. On the other hand, faith is a choice. A choice to believe what God says is true. It is a choice to believe that what God says is true. If God says you are fearfully and wonderfully made, then you and I need to agree and accept that we are, we are fearfully and wonderfully made. Sometimes when you go into the mirror and you look at yourself, you pity yourself and you wonder why God made your eyes like that. And sometimes some of us look at our nose and you tell God, wouldn't you have done a better job here? But God says you are fearfully and wonderfully made. I am reminded one Sunday, 2006, I was carrying my daughter at the gate of this cathedral, this gate here. And uh, some young people knew that that was my daughter. Others didn't know. So one who didn't know came and asked and said, but whose baby is this that you are carrying? And so the one who knew told them that this is his daughter. And the girl said, Wapi, you can't have a beautiful daughter like this one. <laughs> but I didn't take offense. I thanked God instead, you know, because this was my daughter and if somebody. And so it is a choice to believe what God says, it is true and accepting and taking God's word as it is. So faith in God and his word operates on the same principle. Faith in God, faith in the word of God operate on the same principle. And it is all about what you believe. And there are many diversions and there are many distortions because People have separated faith from the word of God and they have started to think otherwise. And they have decided to take God's word in another dimension. And we need to be extra careful. It changes situations. Faith changes the situations. Where you would be downcast with the faith, you will be uplifted. Where you would be crying, you will afford a smile. It restores the joy and the happiness of God's children. Where they have taken advantage of you, instead, it restores you. Because you know, I have one who is able to take me through and to carry me through. And faith can open all closed doors for your life. Can open all closed doors. And unfortunately, sometimes we hardly believe because we lack faith. Sometimes we struggle on our own because we want to work at it. Now, I am not saying we should become lazy and not do anything. Matthew chapter 17, verse 14. Matthew 17, verse 14. When they returned to the crowd, a man came to Jesus, knelt down, before him and said, Sir, have mercy on me. My son, have mercy on me. Have mercy on my son. He is an epileptic and has such terrible fits that he often falls in the fire into water. I brought him to your disciples, but they could not heal him. Jesus answered, how unbelieving and wrong you people are. How long must I stay with you? How long do I have to put up with you? Bring the boy here to me. 
Jesus gave a command to the demon and it went out of the boy and at that very moment he was healed. Then the disciples came to Jesus in private and asked him, why couldn't we drive the demon out? It was because you haven't enough faith, answered Jesus. I assure you that if you have faith as big as a mustard seed, you can say to this hill, go from here to there, and it will go. You could do anything. May the Lord bless his word. How does faith work? Faith works when we get to the understanding that we need Jesus. So that you have faith in Jesus. That is when it works. That is where the connection is. And you know, we all need Jesus. And we really do. Every day that we live, we cannot take it for granted. Tuesday, some people had tried, had kept trying, and there was, I think, some promise that they could also meet with the deputy speaker of parliament. The speaker is not around. And then somehow, I think there are two groups that knew me because we had disagreed over a few things. And so they went and checked with the personal assistant, and then they found I was part of the team that was going to meet him. And so two people kept calling me and asking me, but how did you make it? And I said, I have the one, the one who is in me is greater than everybody and is even greater than the protocol. You know, we need Jesus in every dimension of our life. Sometimes we come compartmentalize him. But we really need him. And so, for faith to work, it begins when we know that we need mercy. Look at verses 14 to verses 16. This young man this man says in verse 15, Sir, have mercy on my son. He didn't tell him, heal my son. He said, where we have reached, we need mercy. And so for faith to work, we need to break down. We need to be humble. And that is why the psalmist in Psalm 51 and verses 10 says, Restore in me a broken, give me a broken and a contrite heart. And you know, when this guy cried for mercy, Jesus looked up and he didn't doubt and he said, Bring the boy to me. And you know, here we see a man who needed, whose son needed mercy, and it was shown it to him because it was a very desperate situation. Verses 14 to 16 when they reached the crowd, a man approached and knelt before him. Lord, he said, Have mercy on my son because of what he goes through. I brought him to your disciples, but they couldn't help. Imagine this disparate situation. He has had this overwhelming concern. We are not told for how long. And you know, he has encountered Jesus' disciples and they couldn't help either. He approached them hoping that something will change. Praise God, all of a sudden, Jesus shows up. And we need Jesus to show up in our lives. We need Jesus to show up in our families. We need Jesus to show up in the church. And we need Jesus to show up in the school. And we need Jesus to show up in this country. Where we have reached, we need Jesus and we need his mercy. And so for faith to work, 
we need Jesus. We need to recognize him. We need to acknowledge him. We need to put our trust in him. And we need to ask him for mercy. We have physical health issues. We have financial burdens. We have overwhelming hearts. We have broken families. We have churches that have become business. Most of us are plagued by sin. And so like this man cried and said, have mercy on my son. We need to cry for faith to work. We need to cry for mercy from him. And you know, this man fell before Jesus and said, Lord, have mercy. And he did not end there. Jesus said, come, bring that boy to me. Let's also take others to Jesus. Let's take our children to Jesus. This is care of sex perversion will not become an issue. Once Jesus takes hold of our children, he will protect them. He will scatter and dispel all darkness from all those schools, from all those individuals will be scattered. At one point, the heavy machinery came into this country from outside because of those friends. And you know, there were many allegations. I really don't want to talk about them here. But you see, they descended on this nation in the evening and they paralyzed the whole of Entebbe and the whole of Kampala. And they launched out into their investigations. And you know, they found that the information they had been fed on was completely trash. And they fizzled out. They disappeared in the night and nobody knows how they went back. Nobody even knows at what time they left to go back because they were embarrassed. And friends, let's not give a devil a foothold. Sometimes we worry too much. Let's take our concerns to Jesus. He is ready to have mercy. He is ready to intervene. And he is already wondering and saying, why are you wasting time on WhatsApp? I have looked at a number of, yes, I have shared and I've made a number of requisitions, but especially because of some information that we are trying to put together. In our interactions yesterday, that is when I realized that most of the people were talking about what they even don't know. Then I asked them whether they know this guy's vision. And nobody knew. And I told them, but it is there in black and white. LGBT vision for action. And it was endorsed by the administrator of one of the international development agencies. And he got instructions from his president. And so I volunteered, I offered to share with them that document. So sometimes I have shared some information, but just for purposes of knowledge, just to help us to know that it came in late. But let's not dwell on that. Let's go back to the Lord. These people tried everything else, it didn't work. For some of us, we have tried money, we have tried makeup, we have tried to look young, we have tried to tell all kinds of lies, we have tried to divide and rule, we have tried all kinds of things. And it hasn't worked. Now let's go back to Jesus and ask him to have mercy and ask him to take over. Whatever the situation, let's take it over to him. Number two, let's understand the fact that Jesus is the power source. And part of his work is to show us where we need correction. Look at verse 17. He said to his disciples, You are the believing and a perverse generation. How long will you be with me? How long must I put up with you? Bring him here. Because they had failed. And then verses 19 and 20, then the disciples approached Jesus privately and said, why couldn't we drive it out? And Jesus said, because of your little faith. We need to know that Jesus is the power source.
these words were tough. You are the believing and perverse generation. Those were words he told the Pharisees and the Sadducees. However, Jesus had just told Peter, go get behind me, Satan. He was nearing to the end of his time on earth. And so he was now getting to the nitty gritty. And he wants to make sure that his disciples learn a very important point. He is offering them correction that will ultimately benefit them and all those to whom they will minister so that they in turn will benefit. So he wants to correct their attitude, what they think they know and how they approach issues. And he says, mm -mm, you have not got it well. And so he said, and you know today, there is a way we take things. We have people who subscribe to the church of Uganda, but the rest of the week, they are everywhere else except in the church. They only come on the Sunday. I want to thank God for you who are able to spare lunch hour and who were there for morning glory and who are there to attend even the evening service and who have persevered and fasted for all of these 40 days. May the Lord bless you. You know, but there are people throughout the week, they are busy in other churches, paying heavily and accepting all kinds of lies. And you know, they will tell you here that now this place, there are people who only want to come here for wedding. There are people who only want to come here to bring a dead body so that they pray. But they are elsewhere. They don't believe. And then unfortunately, that has caught up with some of us. Some of us have our own men and women of God. And some of us even tithe elsewhere. You just bring the remnants. Change, eh? That is what you bring here. I'm not preaching the prosperity gospel. Mine is understanding how faith works. And Jesus had to correct them. That we need to understand that the power source is Jesus. Now, if you remember, I think it is in John chapter 14, I think around about, around, around about verses 21, when he even told them that, you know, there are many things that I have done, but if you believe, you are going to do even greater things than I have done. And, you know, we are busy chasing men and women of God. We are busy chasing ministries elsewhere instead of building and growing, nurturing our faith. And he told them greater things. Now if he says that, don't you think we can do greater things? There are many things that have died. And part of the resurrection he is calling us into is maybe to resurrect finances. It might be to resurrect morals. It might be to resurrect relationships. It might be to resurrect planning. It might be to resurrect fellowship. There are many things that he is telling us about. And that is the problem that his disciples had. And he said, you are a generation that is like everybody else. Our generation today thinks about money. And unfortunately, it has also crept into the church. And many church leaders are only thinking about money. And there are people, even among some of us clergy, since Betty is here, they say things of the generals are for the generals. There are some of us who first wanted to know how much are they going to pay me before I can go there. And there are some of us who can work out their way. You can quote me since I'm one of them. I'm talking and I'm saying some. I'm not saying everybody. And so we have got it wrong. And he's saying this generation. What has happened to our generation? So that today we no longer have faith in the wife of our youth. 
I checked in the high court to see how many men and women who have wedded, including All Saints Cathedral, who have filed for divorce. And it is alarming. What has happened to our generation? We need to get back to Jesus because he is the source of love. And that is the task he gave, and he called them a perverse generation. What has happened to our generation? So that we can do anything in order to earn and in order to get money. Some people have even reached at the point of selling human beings. A few years ago, there was a screaming headline on one of the newspapers where a wife connived with her own children to kill her husband, the father of her own children. And not just an ordinary person. And because of a number of things. And this lady had, you can imagine, that is where the generation has reached. And Jesus is saying, excuse me. How far astray have we gone? Faith does not work like that. Let's get ourselves back to Jesus because he is the source of power. When we get our lives and our relationship right with Jesus, then he sorts out every other thing around us. Not that I am perfect, not that clergy are perfect, not that bishops are perfect, but let's allow Jesus to be our source of power. Let Jesus be our all in all. Praise the Lord. And you know, they ask him, why couldn't we drive it out? And they knew something was not right. And Jesus tells them, because of your little faith. Not really that they didn't, not that their faith was small. But they looked partly at their experience. But also partly they wanted to do it the way Jesus did, copy and paste. And Jesus said, you know, these things, they are different. Take every situation as it comes. And so he says, you don't have to minister in your name. Minister in the name of Jesus. Because he wants us to minister in his name. What did the man want at this point in time? The third thing is that we need to know we need to know what we need. We should know what we need, but also what we deserve. S1 selection has a cut-off points. We need a place in the S1, but there is a cut-off points, and there are choices that we have made. Now, the marks we have and the choices we have made determine what we deserve or where we deserve to go. Now, that is tough. And I know brethren don't want to hear that because everybody is eyeing King's College Budo and Gayaza. And King's College Budo and Gayaza are not the only school. Let me tell you, P1, I couldn't afford these private schools. I had to put my first born and my second born in a UPE school. P1 up to P7, UPE school. But I decided to work with my children. They had colleagues going to Kaboja, and sometimes you looked at the other children and you listened to your children and you wondered where we were headed. But guys, when the results came, my son had done better than all the children in Kaboja Junior. <laughs> far, far better. When it came to feeling choices, you need to know what you need. You need, you need to know and understand what is it that you need and what do you deserve. Now people don't know what they need. That is why you find a man is very comfortable getting married to a man. And some churches have accepted to wed them. Did you know that there is an LGBT church here in Kisasi? Oh, yes. <laughs> it's not far-fetched. Because people don't know what they need. They even don't know what they deserve. 
They even don't know what God has in store for them. So we put our children in a UPE school, but we walked with our children every day. And sometimes I had to go to class to make sure I see how the teacher is teaching. One morning I got into class, I will not tell you which school, I will not tell you which class. I get into class and I find children are playing. The teachers, two teachers who are supposed to be in that class are not there. But there was a chalk. I picked the chalk and I started the teaching. The lesson was coming to an end and then the head teacher came. He found me teaching. Thank God he didn't interrupt my class. I finished, I gave these learners an assignment. He had to run around looking for these teachers until he got them. Me, I walked away, I didn't even go to his office. I left them to sort themselves out. Because I know what my children need and I know what they deserve. And some of us up to today, they intimidate you. When it is Eid Day, you also dress like a Muslim. And yet you are not a Muslim. When it is Friday, you also to go where to where it is happening. They call it happening. Eh? There are many places where it happens on Friday. Because you don't know who you are. You don't even know what you deserve. You don't even know what you need. You don't know even what God has in store. But this guy knew. And that is why he was specific. He said, number one, have mercy. And then he asked for healing. Jesus is the ultimate healer. Verses 18. Then Jesus rebuked the demon. And it came out of him. And from that moment... The Bible says the boy was healed. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Jesus can heal our land. Jesus can heal our marriages. Jesus can heal our finances. Even the church needs a healing. And we need to specify and ask him for healing. Our faith should be anchored on Jesus. And the main and the best way to grow our faith is really to internalize God's word. Colossians chapter 3, is it verse 16, says, let the word of Christ dwell richly in you. For this faith to work, let's cultivate, let's grow it. Let's grow and nurture our faith in the word of God. That is where the promises are and those are the promises. And that is where we hinge our faith. That is where our faith springs up. And so he says, let the word of Christ reign. So let's obey and act on God's word. And James in chapter 1 verse 2 says, do not merely listen, but go ahead and do what it says. There is the action part of faith. So that when it tells you to repent, you repent. When it tells you to move, you move. And in verse 25, he says, but whoever looks intently into the perfect law, that gives freedom and he continues in it, not forgetting what they have had, but doing it, they will be blessed in what they do. There is a benefit. James chapter 1, verse 25. When you persist, when you continue, the Bible ends James chapter 1, verse 25 by saying, you will be blessed in doing it. Acts chapter 17 tells us in verse 11 about the Bereans, that they were of a more noble character than their colleagues in Thessalonica. Because they received the message with eagerness. And they didn't only receive it with eagerness, they also continued to examine scripture. God is aware of our poverty. God is aware of our sickness. God is aware of our sorrow. But we are sure he has all of these blessings for you. He has all of this. All we need is to plug into them and we will receive them. Look at Daniel, what he went through with his friends. And when you read that story, you marvel because of their faith in God. Look at Esther, Hadassah, an orphan who rose through the ranks and became a queen. 
Look at Joseph, who rose to become a prime minister. By faith, they didn't give up. They did not coil their tails to sit down and begin to cry. Oh, blame game. They didn't even go to anybody's court. They took everything to the court of heaven. And it was a matter of time. And we read all. Moses, Exodus chapter 14. He led the children of Israel and he got to the edge of the Red Sea. What do you do? Behind is the enemy. In front of you is this great water. The enemy is going to swallow you alive. The water is just going to mess you up. And you know what? In that instant, as it were, God spoke and said, raise that stick. Strike the water and it will separate. Very weird, awkward thing to do. But Moses obeyed. And when he did, do you wonder why we sing that song, God will make a way where there seems to be no way. He walks in ways we cannot see. He will make a way for me and he will be my guide. closely to his side with love and strength for each new day. He will make a way he will make well. Look at young David, son of Jesse, confronting Goliath in 1 Samuel chapter 17. And he reminded him. And he said, when I was looking after cows, when I was looking after our animals, I would confront a bear. I would now get hold of it. And who are you? An uncircumcised Philistine. And you know that day, the king allowed Saul allowed David and said, you try, but before you go, put on my attire. David tried his attire. He even failed to walk. He brought it back. He said, it doesn't work this way. And after removing that thing, he picked his sling and his stones. And the Bible said he swung his sling and it went and sank deep into the forehead of Goliath. And that was the end of the story. He did not get a giant from anywhere else. No. In fact, when he was beginning that, even his own elder brother said, you man, you are really terrible. Let me conclude. We need faith in Jesus. Because there is no one who loves you and me more. And there is no one who knows what is best for you than Jesus. And so sometimes he corrects us. And so sometimes he takes his time just for purposes of fellowship with you and me. And so let's seek him through prayer. Let's seek him through Bible reading and Bible study. Let's seek him through singing praises. Let's seek him through fellowship. Let's seek him through testimony and witnessing of the goodness of the Lord. And our faith will surely work. And we will rise above the storms of life. And only God alone will be glorified. Let us pray together. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for your loving kindness that you give us things that are not impossible, but you give us guidance and counsel that works, that is practical. There are many burdens and loads that we have carried that are not necessary, but as we draw to the climax of these 40 days of prayer, help us to have that faith that works to move mountains, that have towered ahead of us for long, that have obstructed us, that have diverted us, that have discouraged us. Father, this afternoon, we choose to come back to you. And friends, you might be here and you are saying, God, 
help me here one more time. I didn't get it well. Like his disciples, they had to go back to him and say, why did we fail? Why couldn't we do it? And maybe you are telling God tonight, where have I missed it? And God is saying, here, I want you to go back and begin all over again. You can just put up your right hand where you are seated as I conclude in prayer with you. Just put up your, just say, God, I want to get it well. I want to get it right. Thank you, Mama, I can see you at the back. Thank you, Professor, I can see you here. Any other person, just put up your right hand and we pray together. You are, by putting up your hand, you are telling God, I am here and I need you again. And I thank you, my brother, at the corner there I can see. Lord, you can see these hands that are lifted up to you because of their cry, because of what they require, because of what they need. Father, give them not only the faith that works, but come through for every situation and for every circumstance. Because we can see that David, by faith, brought down a giant. And by faith, these dear ones are going to conquer. So help each one of us and be honored and be glorified through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.